So for part two here, we've worked out the concentration of our potassium manganate. And then as I said, we're going to do a redox titration. So we can see here we've got the two half equations with the iron that is within the supplement itself. So it's a case of making up the actual solution. So we've uh, had the iron dissolved in some sulfuric acid just to get rid of the uh, bulking agent. Well, not get rid of them, but break it up from the bulking agents that's within the tablet. And then we filter it out. We collect the iron sulfate, make it up into solution. So the potassium manganate is going within the burette. And then we'll have the 25 cubic centimeters of the iron sulfate. So it's mainly this that we're interested in, the iron 2 plus ions within the conical flask. So for making up some results, um, what should we say? We'll say, started with rough, we went up to 22. We overshot it a little bit, so I'll say I finished it. I'm just going to use these two. Again, concordant here within 0 0.1 of each other. So the average there. Again, bear in mind, I'm always recording these to two decimal places, which you should be doing from the burette. And now just to go through the calculations for it. So first thing, combine the two half equations given in the introduction to give the overall redox equation for this. So if we look back up at the half equations, we can see there that this is gaining five electrons. This only releases one electron. So in order to cancel the electrons out, I would need to multiply everything on this line by 5. So I would have 5, 5, 5 there. That allows me to cancel the electrons. And then everything else I just merge together. So there is all of my reactants. And there is all of my products. So the key thing just to take away from that is it's a 1 to 5 ratio. All right, so off the top of my head, what was up there? We had MnO4 minus 5Fe2 plus. Um, 2 plus. And then... I think that equation's right off the top of my head. Right, so use the concordant titer value to calculate the number of moles of manganate ions reacted. So, moles, N equals CV. Concentration, if we scroll back up, we worked out at being 0 0.02. So if I go down with this, times by, and then the volume, 20.50 over 1,000. So if we get the calculators out for that, 20.5 divided by 1,000 times 0 0.02, 4.1 times 10 to the minus 4. Use your balanced equation to calculate the number of moles of iron within the 25 cubic centimeters. So for every one potassium manganate, five here. So all I would simply do, 4.1 times 10 to the minus four, divide by five. So 2.05 times 10 to the minus three. Now calculate the amount of, in moles of iron within the 100 cubic centimeters graduated flask at the start because your tablets were made up into this. So you put all of the tablets essentially into that 100 cubic centimeter flask and then you took little portions out from them. 
So if we know the number of moles in 25, to get the number of moles in 100, well, there's four 25s in 100. So essentially, I'm just doing 100 divided by 25. So that equals four. So I've got four lots of this. So 2.05 times 10 to the minus three times four. And that gives me 8.2 times 10 to the minus three there. Now, using your answer to D, this one, calculate the mass of iron in the original five tablets. So if I want to work out mass, mass equals moles times maybe the atomic mass since we're just looking at this. And iron, 55.8. Uh, my eyesight isn't failing me looking across the room. Right, and from here, so that's our mass in grams. Given that the mass of one tablet, so clearly um, I've picked a wrong titration value, we're going to be going off a little bit here. Oh no, wait. That's the mass in five tablets, right, okay, we're going to be fine. Given that the mass of one tablet was 0 0.45 grams, calculate the percentage composition in a tablet here. Right, so this is the mass in five tablets. So if I do 0 0.45756, Divided by five, and one tablet there, and then as a percentage composition. I'm coming out at 20.3% there. So compare your calculated mass of iron in one tablet with the information from the supplier. So you would just need to compare this value with whatever's on the back of the box that you are using. Thank you.